In November 1924, French physicist Louis de Broglie presented his revolutionary theory that has become one of the cornerstones of quantum physics. Five years later, in 1929, de Broglie won the Nobel Prize in Physics for this work. To mark the centenary of de Broglie's theory, I am at the Institut des Hautes Etudes Scientifiques to meet Professor Thibaut Damour, who is an expert on the theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. Can you tell us what de Broglie proposed 100 years ago? De Broglie's theory is a generalization of what Einstein did in 1905, completed in 1917. Einstein said, we have known for centuries that light is a wave, but Einstein said one must associate to the wave-like nature of light a particle-like aspect. A light wave is characterized by the period and by the wavelength of the light, and then Einstein associated to the period T an energy and to the wavelength a linear momentum and said that there should be quantum of light, particle associated to light. In 1924, De Broglie had the revolutionary idea of generalizing what Einstein did for light for matter. Matter was conceived only as particles and then De Broglie made the reverse discovery of Einstein. He said, ah, to these particles, let me associate a wave now. And curiously, he used the basic same formulas as Einstein, saying that for a particle I know the energy and the linear momentum, so let me associate a period T of this wave and a wavelength lambda by the same equation as Einstein had written before, but with a completely different meaning because De Broglie now was saying what was conceived as particles of matter become a wave, why Einstein has, had said that what was conceived as a wave, light, as also a particle behavior. How was it proved? First one should say that the idea of Einstein of associating a particle to the wave nature of light was considered by everybody as being totally absurd. And for 20 years, nobody believed in what Einstein had said. Um, so De Broglie had the revolutionary idea of doing the contrary and he also said that there could be experimental tests. So he said if you send an electron through a crystal then you should see wave-like patterns in the way the electron is scattered by this crystal. And this was checked by two American physicists, Davison and Germer, a few years later, that's why uh, De Broglie got the Nobel Prize very fast. How did De Broglie's theory help in the development of quantum physics? De Broglie's idea of saying that matter has wave-like properties uh, made a crucial step forward. Actually, what happened is when De Broglie defended this thesis, people in France were uncertain whether this idea was interesting or not. They asked Einstein. Einstein said, oh yes, this is a very interesting idea. De Broglie has lifted the corner of the veil about the mysteries of nature. And then he publicized it around himself. He wrote a paper about it. And then Schrödinger heard from Einstein uh, about this idea of De Broglie and Schrödinger at the idea of writing an explicit equation for the propagation of the waves. Why De Broglie had said, I have these waves, he described some qualitative features, some also quantitative things, but he did not write an equation for the propagation of the wave. This was left for Schrödinger, who also won the Nobel Prize a few years later, and the Schrödinger-De Broglie equation about the propagation of waves of matter is considered as one of the fundamental equations of quantum mechanics and is used today in all the applications of quantum mechanics. And there are many applications of quantum mechanics. All the modern technologies, uh, including what we have uh, makes our uh, smartphones work, 
uh, is based on quantum mechanics. Can you explain more about these applications? For instance, um, especially in France, the, the tradition of, um, of considering matter as being a, a wave uh, has led to several Nobel Prizes in France from, uh, attributed to Claude Cohen Tanuji and uh, Serge Arroche and also more recently uh, Alain Aspect. All those aspects of quantum physics were based on the idea of associating a wave to material particles. And then they led to many applications in solid state physics because uh, a smartphone works because you use the quantum nature of the propagation of electrons uh, in the semiconductors. Okay? The fact that um, this is wave-like is the basis of all the modern technology. What was in De Broglie's background that made him come up with this theory? De Broglie was lucky to um, have a brother who was a physicist. In fact, his elder brother, Maurice De Broglie, worked um, in, in crystal and X-ray uh, physics linked to crystals. And Maurice De Broglie organized one of the most famous modern scientific conferences, the first Solvay conference in 1911 on quantum physics. This was the first international conference on, on quantum physics, where Einstein was the most important uh, contributor to this conference. And Maurice de Broglie um, edited the proceedings. So he had all the texts written by the participants. And then he showed to his younger brother, Louis, all those texts. So this way, early on, why Louis de Broglie was not yet convinced that he wanted to become a physicist, he could read the text of Planck, of Einstein, of Lorentz, and then he, he, he understood that this is what he wanted to do in life. But he had also, he started thinking, he said, ah, this idea of Einstein that people um, half understand, but it's still mysterious. So he thought very deeply about this for several years, because this was in 1911. And then he came up with his first articles in the Compte Rendu of the Academy of Sciences in 1923. And then he wrote up and defended his thesis in 1924. So there were 10 years of thinking, brooding, you know, maturation of these ideas.